So next one is going to talk about functions. So um, first of all, give me a thumbs up if you know how to write your own functions. Cool. All right. So um, this is going to be a quick review then. Basically, why would we use functions? Um, just going to tell you. It basically allows us so we don't have to repeat ourselves. We don't have to copy and paste the same code. It gives us more functionality. It gives us more order and stuff like this. Um, functions in general, if you're doing it more than twice, um, possibly if you're only doing it twice even, you should write a function to do that. That way you don't have to rewrite it every single time and copy and paste. Um, this is a classic example of um, when you are in data science, you might have to write the same, like you might copy and paste the same thing over and over and you should think to yourself, if you start co copy and pasting the same thing over and over to do the same process, you're like, you know what, maybe I should write a function so then I don't have to like copy and paste it every time, okay? So um, this is where the curriculum kind of talks about like you can have a function with no parameters. So this function right here, basically it's like a set of like steps, like almost some people call it a recipe. Some people say like, oh, there's a, like a list that you just follow. Um, you can kind of think of it like that. So this function right here is called, you define it, my function, no parameters, a equals one, b equals two, return a plus b. Basically it's just gonna give me three every single time. My print function here is gonna be total. Note that I call another function here which would be three, and I can print it total and then return total 100. So now that these have a slightly different uh, functionality in here, yeah, functionality. All right, so my func here is going to call this guy one, two, add it together. So it should be C, or sorry, C is equal to three. Um, note if I try to run, if I try to print out the letter A here or the variable A, which we said was one here, this won't actually do anything because it's only defined within that little like, um, list itself in that little function. It's not going to go here. This is called scope. Um, if you hear this in computer science, stuff like this. Okay, so just know that this stuff basically lives inside here. There are ways to treat these guys outside called global variables. And in, in Python, I will say, don't use global variables. It's considered bad practice. It's something you might see sometimes. And whenever I see it, it hurts my soul. Um, so don't do global variables in Python. In other programming languages, it's pretty common. But um, Python, it typically, it's like, not a not kosher. All right. So um, another function we had was my print function. So note that this will basically call my print function here. Uh, it'll say this is three, print three, and then return three hundred plus one hundred. Or sorry, three plus one hundred, so one hundred three. So note that if I put c here, so I'm actually going to put this like this. If I say c is equal to my print function, c will be one hundred and three, but it'll still print out three. So you can see here, like, hell, oh, it just printed out three. But if I check my C now and print this out, you'll see it's 103. And that's because this return is saying it passes it to once the function is done versus this print in here is just doing stuff. Note that if I got rid of this return part, so let's say I got rid of this completely and run this and run my print function here, it'll still print out three like this. But if I check my C value, the same idea what C value will be. It's not three. Actually, none. Basically, nothing was returned. Um, equivalent to this, if you had returned, so sometimes you'll see people like have returned like this. Um, that actually means it's returning nothing. So you can also see it's the same idea. If I go ahead and run this guy, it'll still print out that three here, right? But C itself will be none. Okay. Does that make sense to people? It's a little tricky, but um, this main idea here is that note that whatever the return is, that's what's going to get passed on to the next part versus any print and stuff. Sometimes people will write this part and then they'll say, oh, three, you know, C is equal to three. And then they'll go back to here and they'll see C is like, like what happened? C is supposed to be three. And it's because they had print instead of return. Okay, cool. All right, um, don't do this. So this is, you can do this. And it's not the best thing, um, I will tell you, is that this is where most mistakes come out and basically other debugging stuff like this. So note that C equals 10 is already defined, right? And then I create a function called D equals C plus one. Note that I'm using the fact that C is already defined up here to return D, right? So I could run this now and I run this. You're like, oh, cool, it's 11, right? Awesome, so now there's two problems that can happen now. We know C is, 10. So we know this my bad function should return, we, let's say we know it adds one to C and just returns that. The problem is what happens if we put that C equals 1000? Well, or to say 10,000, right? So there's two possibilities. One is that it's going to return 10,000 plus one, or it's going to keep 10 plus one. 
And depending on how you think about your functions, you might think it does one thing or the other. So if you actually run this now, you can actually see it does, oh, even though I didn't run this code again, it's just using whatever C is, which might be what you want it to do, but it might not be what you expect or you forget what the function does. Like, because when you run this function again, you're not looking at what the C is. You're not looking at this internal code. So it's considered bad practice. If you want to pass in like a variable like this, the better way to do this would actually be putting in a parameter like this, let's say C var, C var, oops, and have a name parameter like this. And then that way I can actually pass in any number I want. So let's say I have this part, I have C equals 10,000, right? And then I can pass this letter C here and that will, oh, oh. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, thank you. There we go. Now it should work. All right. So you can see, oh, I ran 10 again. See? You see? All right, 10,000. Now this should work. 10,001. Okay. And also that means I can use it a lot better now. I can use whatever value I want and it will work. Okay. So this tends to be better practice if you do this way versus referring to a variable that's outside of the scope. Okay. Any questions about these functions? Pretty straightforward. Cool. All right. So I'm going to give you one last thing. Um, so this is a little bit more complicated function, but basically just a list of things to do. Um, this is perfectly fine. Like it does what you expect it to do probably, but you notice that like when if I look at just like the word funk like this and I'm like, I didn't look at like, let's say like, Oh, I don't remember what this does. I'm like, I don't know what it does. Like, Oh, it does that. Okay, cool. So you can see is that sometimes this isn't super descriptive. So a, well, a good data scientist, a good programmer documents their functions. So you can add a few things in here. So one, you can see comments in the actual code, but also this doc string here, which is super useful. Basically, this is kind of like describing like what it does. And you'll see that my parameters here are actually named over here. So we can actually name these parameters and have default values. So my number is, has no default value takes in a variable. But if I actually run this function without other number and convert to string, it'll automatically just treat these as zero and none. So if I actually run this function now, let's say uh, together, um, let's say 10, what this will do is like, oh, it'll treat this, my number is 10. This is going to be, uh, oops, I gotta run this. This will actually be default to zero and then convert to string will be none. So this will actually run this as a, okay, added equals my number, which is 10 plus zero, which will give me just 10. Uh, if convert to string, since none, it's not going to execute. So we say, okay, it's just going to return the number 10. So if I run this now, number 10. Okay. And what's really nice because I documented this, remember I said shift tab? Do you guys remember me talking about shift tab in Jupyter Notebook? Yeah, check this out. I do shift tab here. Look at that. It's all there already. So what's really nice is that you help yourself in the future. It's like, imagine now, instead of this right here, this is all the way off screen, you know, a thousand lines above somewhere, you know, and you're like, oh my gosh, what is, I don't remember what add together does. You, instead of looking for add together, you can just do a shift tab. And like, oh look, past picture was so nice. I was so nice to myself and I wrote all this documentation and I can see exactly what to do. Um, so um, when you write functions like this, do your best to like document it. It's gonna help yourself, it's gonna help others. It's also gonna look more professional and people are gonna be like, yes, I wanna work with this person because this person knows how to document their functions and I don't have to worry about like asking them like, hey, what the heck's going on here? Um, so that's my little tip to you guys. But um, real quick, some of the stuff you can do is you can also then pass in like another number. This one gives 11, right? I can also pass in because I say, oh, convert to string. Yes, I want to convert to string. Let's say true. Oops, two, I don't know what that is. True. You can see, oh, they messed up. So you can see now I have to debug my function or something like that. But anyway, the point is I can create this function, do different things and stuff like that. I can also give obviously other number. I can say other number equals this and say my number uh, equals one. So you can see I actually pass in the name parameters themselves and I'll do what, I'm, what I want it to do. Okay. Note that um, if you have order, for example, in this function, my number was not given a default number. So if I just give it like, if I do something like my number equals one like this, this will run perfectly fine. Cool, it just knows what my number is. Um, no, I didn't have to put this number in here. I could have just put the number one, would have been fine. However, if I have my other number, which already had a default value, but I don't specify my number, Python's gonna be like, hey, whoa, whoa, whoa I don't know what to do. And it's gonna give an error. It says, whoa, whoa, whoa like I, I, you're missing something. I don't know what to do with my number. So know that basically it'll give you this error here. So one way to fix it is like, oh, I can then give my number. 
say something like that. And note that if you name it, you can name it, you can put it out of order. Okay. Cool. All right. Any questions about that? Pretty good. Okay. Tell you what, since it is kind of getting later, um, I'm not going to go over scary lambda function. Um, we'll save that off for another time. Um, but just know that if you come across a lambda function, it literally is just the same thing as a normal function um, here. So I'll talk, I'll talk about this in more detail in the future. Um, but if you do see this, for example, I know this is a solution in the Macbeth solution. Um, we'll talk about this more in the future, like what this is. But just know it's basically the same thing as defining a function. It's just one of those shortcuts, just like that ternary operator with the if else. Um, lambda function is kind of like another kind of like way to write it in like one short line. Um, if you're familiar with functions like in like JavaScript, for example, JavaScript allows you to write these kind of similar things. Um, sometimes they're referred to as anonymous functions or no-name functions. Um, but here in Python, they call it lambda functions. Okay, so we'll talk about this in the future. Okay, um, okay cool. Um, so I just want to leave a couple minutes just if you guys have any overall questions about anything we talked about or something that you would like to see or something like that. Uh, I do have one small thing um, yeah. that I feel like wasn't totally mentioned in the material, but a couple times here. Um, I guess it falls under ternary operators. Um, I know mm -hmm. for one of the solutions in the, um, mm -hmm. I think it was a uh, looping over collections lab. Mm -hmm. uh, it allowed us to uh, go into a data frame and I guess iterate through every little uh, dictionary that was inside a list of dictionaries. Um, but it was written a very interesting way. And I guess it looked like a ternary operator if I put that in the chat real quick. So. Yeah, yeah. Boop. Okay, I'll probably paste this over to make it clear here. Something like this, right? Yeah. Okay. I think I kind of like accepted how that works, um, oh. but it just wasn't yeah. really mentioned. You're like, you're asking what this is exactly, right? Yeah. List comprehension. Comprehension. Exactly. Yeah, so uh, <laughs> thank you for adding that in. List comprehension is what yeah. this mm -hmm. is. So this is another one of like, um, like another kind of, we call it like syntactic sugar for like Python. Um, basically this is creating a list very, very quickly. So I'm actually gonna change this to range of 10. And let's say uh, city times 10. Okay, and if you look at city names now, you'll see that basically this will take a part in city. So it'll go like zero, one, two, three, four, all the way through nine, right? And then it's just gonna say this is times 10. So the equivalent to this, again, you could have done this by itself in multiple lines. It's just that this is a nice kind of quick way for Python. We could have done something like, let's say, city. Um, someone has their mic on. Do you guys mind if uh, you need that real quick? Thank you. Um, so we have city names. Um, I'm going to say equals zero uh, for city in range of 10. I'm just kind of kind of uh, copying that thing right there from above for the list comprehension. And I can do uh, city names dot append and then city times 10. And then if you notice if I've done right, city names, this will do the same thing. So you can see that this guy right here is a really common thing that we would have to write over and over again, especially in data science where you're like iterating over a loop and you want to do the same thing over to that element over and over again. Um, list comprehensions allow us to just very quickly write this list essentially. Um, note that list comprehension is kind of a misnomer because it doesn't have to be just list. Um, so I mentioned about tuples. For example, we can actually create a tuple in the same way. It's a tuple comprehension. So it's not super obvious because it's a generator. But if I then say, this makes it more use. <laughs> there you go. There you go. So you can basically have these other parts uh, produced. You can also do something like a dictionary. So remember a dictionary like this. It can actually do like city colon city. So city, um, in this case, city is going to be like 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and 8, 9, right? And this will be just a 10 uh, or 0, 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90. Wait, well, darn it, this now. Oops. Yeah, oh my gosh. You can see I now have a dictionary. So um, this is a really useful thing in Python. In fact, this is one thing like I, whenever I go code in another programming language, I'm like, ah, I miss this in Python so much. Um, but it's basically the same thing. If I wanted to write this guy now as a dictionary, like full, like, you know, part, I would just say, oh, city names is equal to an empty dictionary. I should probably just do dict. 
like this. And I say, okay, for city in range 10, I would say uh, city names instead of dot append. Let's do city names. What did I put in there? City. I'll just put it like this. Okay. And that will give us, should give us the same thing. So again, it's like, oh, we could technically do it this way, but you can see it's a little bit cleaner in this way. There's other things you can do in those comprehensions, um, um, but it's technically like you could technically your whole life never doing this comprehension and it work fine. Okay. Kind of help, Johnny? Um, yeah, definitely. Yeah, I think that's uh, roughly how I was arranging it in my brain to like, you know, just understand the solution without like being told it by material. But yeah, I think, I think that still follows with how I believe I understand it. Yeah, yeah. I think um, it's definitely something like, I think Python really tries hard to make it like readable. So you can see here, it's like, oh, this is going to be a list. Um, it's a list city times 10 for city in range of 10. So you kind of know a little bit of like that flow. It reads almost like a sentence. Um, so that's kind of like what that list comprehension looks like. Note that you can also have list comprehensions with nested for loops. Um, but I won't go over that today. Uh, we'll maybe go over this maybe for more advanced Python stuff as we kind of like it get it more and more exposed to like why we would do those kind of things. But you can also put in things like a ternary operator in here as well. So you can see something like if, um, I'm just gonna make something I'm like if true else. Or something like this, like this could be some really funkiness right now. So, oh, I didn't even do the right syntax. But the point is, is that you can actually tie in um, ternary operators in your thing and you can have Lambda functions in here and all this craziness um, going on. Um, but the main thing is I would say is that if you're trying to do this stuff in general, um, make sure it's understandable and readable versus trying to be fancy. Okay. All right, so uh, is it fair to say it's not necessarily mandatory for best practice? It's more like as long as it's readable and not too bulky. Yeah, I would say the biggest thing in Python, um, we talked about PEP8, about coding practices. Um, PEP8 describes simplicity over brevity. Is that like you want to make it understandable versus starting to make it short. So sometimes uh, making it shorter and like condense is more understandable, but other times it just obscures exactly what's going on. So um, there isn't a strict like, oh, you need to do it this way. Like list conferences are never being used or you should always use list conferences if you can. It's much more like, oh, whatever makes sense in that certain stance. And if you start getting this list comprehension that's getting a little too unwieldy, there's no shame in doing something like this. Like it might make it more readable and you can comment on it a lot easier. Thank you. Great question. Yeah, and great, great thing to bring up. Um, I, I wish we could go, we could spend like a whole like month on talking about Python and all these different parts for sure. Um, but uh, I think the biggest thing is gonna be as you try to see something, try it out, see what happens. Um, and you'll pick up little tricks and stuff. Uh, one thing I will tell you, um, I found really recently, so I equals zero, and then I'll stop it here. But um, what if I wanna add one to this I, right? How would I, um, let's say I do like print I, oops. How would I just add one to this I? variable plus equals plus equal plus equal one right like, yeah which is the same thing as saying like you know i plus one right like be the same thing we can also do minus equals do you guys know this minus equals one okay what about this oops what's that do <laughs> yeah i saw this a, a few months ago and i was like what <laughs> like it does work i just haven't got to guess what it evaluates to yeah <laughs> Your 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 stun right now should be the right, right answer. Go ahead, Johnny. Does does it does it minus negative one, therefore yeah. adding one? Yeah, it gives you one. Um, <laughs> this is an obscure way of basically saying minus equal minus one. Um, this is one of those things where why are you doing this? Like this is obscuring something. It technically works, but like it's not super clear. So again, just because it works doesn't mean it's the right way. Um, works means that it's also readable and understandable and you can go back to it and not say, what is this weird operation that is in Python now that technically works? So yeah, anyway, I'll end it there. Um,